Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Benta, and if you're new here, ooh, make sure you hit on that subscribe button and also like this video, okay? So, as you guys can tell, I'm super excited. I'm super excited, okay? And if you have watched my last video, you know I got emotional over there um, because of the girls that are stuck in Lebanon. But now I'm so excited because this morning we got news update from Lovet Jalo that the girls are finally coming back home, that the Gambian government is now willing to work with her and her NGO and bring back, bring back the girls finally. Mm, that's nice, that's nice. Mm -hmm, mm, I like it. But um, I just wanted to um, do this video and just say just a few words and then I'll play Lovett's video at the end as well so you guys can listen to what exactly she said and what when, when they're gonna come back and what's gonna happen. So this just shows me and I think it should show us all the Gambians that we have a voice we have a voice and we need to put our voice into use okay so if you are if you're not rich in an African uh, country if you're not rich your voice is your only power our voice is our power we put the government in the positions that they are in we put the officials in those positions so if we see wrong it is up to us to get out and speak our concerns you know don't keep saying oh these people they're not gonna do anything these people they're not gonna do anything yes they probably are not gonna do anything but guess what at some point they will be pushed to do something because you know why I watched a video where Ahmadjita was and I can tell they are not happy that this whole thing came into the media you know they said um, he was saying that it was wrong for Lovett to bring out like audio conversations in the media and talking about what's happening in the media and probably they think some of them are lies but anyways they, they want to believe some of them are lies but it's not but the fact that most of these um, things came out in the media about these girls, just I feel like it shamed the government that they don't know what to do. They wanted to do something, but it was too late. So what I'm saying here is that you don't have to wait until you're rich to be able to do something. You don't have to sit and keep saying, government made for that. Ah, government, you can't move on. Ah, government be kai. Ni mo munu dara. Baro mo. Nela ore. You get up also and do something. Because Baba is going to be doing Nela for a very long time. If you don't stand up and fight for yourself. The government is not do going to do anything for a very long time. If you don't stand up and fight for yourself. You know, the way, uh, what happened here is that Love got pushed to a limit. How many soko pussy in a pusko, in a pusko, in a pusko, banging egg as a marajba? I'm not for more than Mugestu, I'm not for more than Mugestu, I'm not for more than the person is gonna push back. In Ahmed Jita's video, um, that's 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 what I uh, was able to um, pick up from there. They're angry because things came out on social media and the whole world knows about what's going on, but they pushed her to the limit. She can't take it anymore, so she has to push back. She has to let people know what's going on. And guess what? When that happens, solved. Problem solved. Problem solved. So, yeah. So, that's why I say we have a voice, you know, in Africa. When you are not rich, when you don't have money, the only thing you got is your voice. But that voice, you guys have to come out. We got to come out and together, you know, come out together and fight for ourselves. Do not expect one person to be the only one to do it, you know. Because if you are doing something and I am not supporting you and a hundred more people are not supporting you, you're going to be left alone, you know. You're not going to succeed in whatever you're trying to do. But if we all come out and do it together, guess what? 
we put them there so it's very easy for we us to make them do what we want them to do as long as it's the right thing as long as it's the right thing we can do it we can make them do it so sitting down and saying definitely nobody is coming out to say anything nobody is trying to help in their own little way it's not gonna make a difference as far as I'm concerned it is not gonna make a difference so I hope uh, this um, girls uh, stuck in Lebanon's issue um, open everybody's eyes and you know just make us know that we have a voice we don't have to be rich we don't have to be in any government uh, 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 position to be able to help we don't have to be very close to the president to be able for them to be able to hear our voice we can do it and love it jalo and her ngo has done it kudos to you girl we're so happy to have you can you guys imagine if we had had only five more lovers in gambia like just five more lovers oh that's it that's it i don't know what's that <laughs> no i'm really excited like when i when I woke up and I saw this, I was like, oh, thank God. Ooh, yes. So, yeah, so I hope the government, you guys also, uh, say, Kusi, say, them Ahmed Jita that is doing a video, Baro, and everybody. I hope you guys learned from this mistake. And I hope you guys will be able to help the girls as well when they get back. Even though Lobet promised to help them, but we are waiting for your own help too because they need it. Because everything they worked for in Lebanon has gone you know into the into um thin air so they have taken everything from them you know so they lose everything so i hope you guys can be able to help them when they come so that they can stand back on their feet and try to help themselves and their families so yeah you guys make sure you um watch the next video which is love it's video and then she's going to talk about when they're going to come back and yeah so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in my next one and love it we love you. So, I just wanted to update you all about the situation in Lebanon. Um, today, we got some amazing news. We woke up to amazing news from my lawyers in Lebanon. Um, it looks like the Gambian government wants to cooperate with my NGO now. So, what has happened today is 26 of the girls have received their travel documents. 26 of the girls have traveled there, got their travel documents. Mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. We have 26 out of the 36 girls that have received their papers. They are allowed to land in the car and go on to Gambia. They are also allowing them to, for me to pay for the tickets. Tomorrow morning, um, the last 10 girls will go and pick up their papers. The last 10 girls will get their paperwork tomorrow. So inshallah, tomorrow morning, all 36 girls will have their paperwork in their hand, stamped and ready and waved, ready to leave on the 4th, which is on Friday, on Friday. Um, we also have one extra girl. Um, all the girls, Susanna, all 37 girls. I, that's what I wanna say. In the beginning of this project, I only had 36 women and children Re being repatriated to Gambia. Um, last night, I received a, an, a messenger from a family in Gambia telling me that their daughter has is also sick and stuck in Lebanon. They wanted me to add her to the list to bring her back to Gambia. So that is one extra girl we're adding to the group. So now we're 37 Gambian women that are allowed to go home. So it looks like the Gambian government is working with me on this matter now so that I can pay for these girls' tickets. Every single girl this morning, I'm calling them girls, but they're women as well. Girls, women, and children went this morning to the consulate in Lebanon. They signed their papers. They signed their papers that they do not want the help of the Gambian government, and they were giving all of their paperwork today. So today, 26 received theirs. Our lawyer has checked every single paper. Everything is good. Tomorrow morning, we will get 10 more papers. And that means a total of 37 are coming home. Oh, 38. We have one extra person. 38 people, Gambian people, will be repatriated under my NGO with the help of the Gambian government. 
to come home, to come home on the 4th. They will be leaving Beirut on the 4th. I will be booking a bus via my lawyer to pick them up, every single one of them and their luggage. My lawyer will take them to the airport. My lawyer will wait until they are sitting on the flight. My lawyer will wait until the flight lifts up and lands in the car and give me an update. From the car, we will have a big bus picking up the girls, the women, the children, and driving them to the border of the Gambia. When they arrive to the border of the Gambia, they will change bus to a next bus, which will bring them into the Gambia, to our homeland. And when they arrive in the Gambia, they have to stay at a hotel for 14 days for quarantine. I will be paying for that as well. When they have stayed for 14 days, they will be allowed to go and meet their family. They will be allowed to go and hug their moms, Gambia. I will meet them at the hotel together with Fatou Jan, who is uh, running NOGAHT, the Women Against Trafficking. So through Fatou Jan's um, uh, NGO, we will be donating one million dalasi um, to these 38 women and children. Those with children will get double. And that is only to make up for all the wages they have lost in, in Lebanon so that they can go home during COVID, help their family, help themselves before they start a new life. And I will be coming to Gambia, hopefully end of September, to be able to continue my work in the Gambia with women. So I just want to say, I see my little brother has joined the live. I just want to say thank you so much, everybody. Tomorrow, um, okay, one more thing that is very important. The flight agency is allowing us another 24 hours for our reservations. So every reservations I have done now, they are allowing us extra time until tomorrow when the last 10 girls have gotten their papers and we will be able to, I will be transferring the, the, the around $27,000 straight to the airline and one of the women in Lebanon will be there with our lawyer to pick up all of the paper. My Lebanese brother Leo is also in the live. Hello Leo, my mom's in the live. I'm so happy you can see it in my face, right? I look... I feel, I feel so happy right now. I feel so happy. Wallahi, I feel happy. So for those of you joining the live now, the Gambian government is finally working together with me. Um, and uh, we have all the paperwork for 26 girls today. I have seen the proof. I have, seen, I have the documents, copies. Um, tomorrow, 10 of them will go and receive their paperwork, inshallah. And one last girl came in, or two actually, two women came in, whose families contacted me from Gambia to say their daughters need to come home. They don't want to be left there. So we put them in this list. We added it. It's, it's just gotten bigger and bigger. Um, and all of them, 38 total, will be coming home via the car on the, third, on the 4th of September. Please continue, continue praying. Please continue pushing us. Please continue holding everybody accountable, including myself. Everything I'm promising in this live, I will deliver. I will deliver it through the people who are on the ground in Lebanon and the people who are on the ground in the Gambia. So we have a team in Gambia headed by Fatou Jain. We have a team in Lebanon headed by my lawyer and headed by two of the women in Lebanon, Gambian women, who are also team leaders to arrange everything that we need. So the, the job is not done. The job is only done when they reach Gambia, they receive their one million dalasi, they go through quarantine. So I will be updating as much as possible and I pray that everything I wish to accomplish in the Gambia for all of you women and men and children, I, God gives me the strength to be able to do it. And I hope that this shows the Gambian government that we don't have to fight, we can work together. But if you want to fight me, we're going to fight. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, that's where we are. I am really happy. I'm really happy for the voices that heard me in the state house. I'm really happy for the voices of you people that, that when I say, please help, you helped. 
you were making lives, you were talking, you were talking to your family, to all my aunties, you guys inspire me. Auntie Tukulor, Auntie Chantar, Ajidafe, Auntie, I see you. I see you all supporting us and this is the Gambia we want to build. A Gambia where women's voices are not silenced. A Gambia that we care about every single person, not only the rich people. This is the Gambia, which is our homeland. This is the Africa that I want to live in. Susanna Jeng, you were just asking me about media, media, media. I have interviews today. I'm going to talk to Kirfatu. I'm talking to the standard um, chartered newspaper. I'm, I'm going to talk to several different people. We cannot, during COVID, maybe ask people to meet them at the airport, but DM me and I will arrange it and you can work with Fatu Jan and you can maybe meet them with media at the airport and do what you have to do. Um, DM me is the easiest, quickest way to get hold of me. If you DM me, my mother will talk to you or my assistant will talk to you or I will talk to you. But I'm speechless today. I'm just like speechless. I'm speechless. So, so speechless. You guys are wonderful human beings. You guys are just amazing. Auntie Effie as well, shout out to you. Thank you so much. This is the Gambia that, uh, that makes me proud because we have aunties and uncles who have been behind the scenes, literally doing their job. They are really, they don't have to support me, but they're supporting me. It's on these aunties and uncles' shoulders that we can, we can stand on. Uncle Coach Pasamba, I, I, you know, I can say so many names and I'm going to make a list and I'm going to thank all of you because I see you. I know what you're doing. I, I really appreciate you. Any Gambian inside or outside of Gambia's national lines who is in pain, all of us are in pain. And that is how we start, need to start working again. Nobody cares if you're Aku, if you're Jola, if you're Paul, if you're Bambara, if you're Sosa. We are one. We are one. Because Gambia is a country that was founded on tribes working together. Tribes working together. Do you understand? Gambia was not founded by one tribe. It was founded by all tribes that came together. And we must stay together. Jola is not better than Paul. Paul is not better than Sarahule. Nobody is better than nobody. We all are distinct tribes with our very distinct customs who must be respected and we can live together in unity all day, every day. Even government and Lovec can live together in unity. I'm just saying, I'm a peaceful girl. I'm a peaceful girl. You have to push me really far for me to be angry, but I'm also an intelligent girl. I'm not stupid and I respect my elders. I respect my elders in the government that have reached out and are helping. Um, I don't want to say anything. Um, I think it's better if I allow them to speak for themselves. I'm so proud of you guys. But Bulen Baide, Hebije have good bedjig in your axi Gambia. Bulen Bai, Bulen Bai, please, let's wake up. Let's wake up. Our sisters are coming home. Our sisters are coming home. I was, it, it, when I pay for everything tomorrow, I will post my receipt so you all know the money has gone out from my account and gone straight to the flight. Um, the, girl, the women also need extra money from me, so I'm going to Western Union them um, another um, 7 million uh, Lebanese dollar today so they can just finish up buying the last things they need uh, before they leave because on the 4th of September, they are going to land in, in Dakar. On the 5th, they will be on Gambian shores. And trust me, we need to welcome them. We need to welcome them. They come in peace, and I want you all to look out for them, to protect them, just like I would protect any one of you, whether you are a boy or whether you are a girl or whether you are a non-gender binary. I don't care. I'm going to support any Gambian out here. And once this job is done, any money that's left over, I'm also going to try and help our Kenyan sisters um, who need tickets. So whatever's left over from that $3 million, I'll sort it out. And I'll always keep you guys in the loop. I hate being online, but I am going to try to be online more. So if you want to share this video, by all means share it. But I'm very particular in saying I thank the regular Gambian who is in this and have been supporting me with your voice. We still need your voice because big changes have to happen for our young people, our women. We need an overhaul Gambia. We need a new Gambia.
We need a new Gambia that benefits us all so that poverty is not going to be as deep as it is because Gambia is not a poor country. So poor people. So we have to, have to help each other. I will never give up on that. And even though I'm giving up on activism, I will still be a humanitarian, a tired humanitarian. But I know when these women come home in Gambia, I will finally be able to sleep and wake up at a regular time. <laughs> because God knows I have not been sleeping all. I know my cheeks are a little fat, but I'm not eating properly either. I'm stressed. This is makeup. I'm stressed. Trust me. I am very stressed. But right now, we're really, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm just so happy. I'm, you guys are saying you're proud of me. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So proud of you all. So proud of you all. Thank you so much. And, well, may the universe bless you all, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, Baha'i. God bless you. Thank you for not giving up on me. And thank you for not allowing me to give up. I love you. I love you. Bye.